Shalom, everyone. The Gemara in Gitin, page 17, is making an historical remark, which is really an, an historiosophical remark. And let me share the sources, and we'll see the sugya for today. Um, so I called it, Why did God exile the people of Israel specifically to Bavel? Now, the answer can be very simple. It's not God. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Bavel, came and, and destroyed the temple and exiled the people to, to Bavel. But from a Jewish and philosophical, historiosophical point of view, Chazal are teaching us that most of what we have in the books of kings, for example, and in Shmuel, it's a point of view of a religious point of view of what's happening to the people of Israel. And there is a reason for everything that comes from God that belongs to a bigger picture. So the question we want to see today to look for it, for an answer through the Mekorot, through our sources and the Gemara today, is that question that Chazal are asking themselves. Is there a reason why the people of Israel were exiled to Babylon, to Babylon specifically? Now, we know why we were sent to Egypt. We, sent, we were sent to Egypt because of what happened with Joseph and his brothers. Even though what, what God tells Abraham in Brit Ben Abitarim is not a specific country, not a specific place, but that his children are going to be slaves. Now, when Nebuchadnezzar comes and destroys the temple and, and, and send you know, all the Jewish, most of the Israelites towards Bavel, that can be his an history, looking at history. But what Chazal are trying to look into is, was there a reason specifically for Bavel? Because we could have gone anywhere else in the world. And what do we get from Bavel uh, specifically? Okay. So let's look into the Gemara. So the Gemara, it's actually the Gemara that starts in page Tedzain in 16 at the end. So we'll just give the the um, um, the reka, the background for, for the story, and it's as follows. Rabbi Barbarchana Chalash, Rabbi Barbarchana was weak, and Rav Yudha and Rabbi entered to visit him and to inquire about his well-being. And what they were doing while they were visiting him, they discussed halacha regarding gitin, okay? That's because that's our masechet. They are discussing with him halachot of gitin. While they were talking to, each, to, to him, Adehachi, in the meantime, while they were sitting there, in came a certain Persian priest that's called in, in Arama Aramaic Chavra. In came a, a Persian priest and took the lamp, the shraga, the candle from before them. They were sitting around the candle and learning in the room and in came that Persian priest and took the candle. Why? It was a Persian holiday on which the Persian prohibited the public from maintaining light outside their temple, outside the Persian temple. So when that happened, after that happened, said Rabbi Barbarchana, who, who is originally from the land of Israel, came to Bevel from the land of Israel. And he says, Rachamana, okay, merciful one, let us live either in your shadow or in the shadow of the descendant of Esav, who are the Romans, okay? Or betulach, either in your shadow, or in the shadow, betula devar Esav, in the children of Esav, which is Rome. Now, this is a very, very surprising statement. In other words, what, Rav, what Rabbi Barbarchana is saying that his experience in the land of Israel under the ruling of the Romans is that the Romans are much better than the Persians because of what happened with the candle. And the Gemara finds it's very strange and, and, and the Gemara asks, Le memra de me parse? It is to say that the Romans are preferable to the Persians after everything they did to us? And let's just remember what they did. They also destroyed our temple. And they had all these decrees on the people, on the Jewish people, very difficult decrees and persecutions. So what is this? How come Rabbi Barbarchana is saying such a, such a statement? And the Gemara brings a baraita in the name of Rav Chia, who is an 
He is at the end of the time of Tanaim, beginning of Amoraim in Eretz Yisrael. But didn't Rav Chiyas teach what is the meaning of that which is written? And he's quoting a pasuk from Job. God understands its way and he knows its place. Now in English, it's its. But if you look at the Hebrew, Elohim hevin darka, who yadait mekoma, we are talking about, about, about a female object. Okay, so what, what, what does Rav Chia learn from that pasuk? This means that the Holy One blessed, he knows with regard to the Jewish people that they are unable to accept and live under Roman decrees. And therefore he arose to exile and exiled them to Babylonia. Yes, says the, says the Gemara, our, our intuition that what Rabbi Rabbi Barachana is saying is not true, is being backed also by Rav Ichia. How can someone say that the exile, that the, that the Persians are, are worse than the Romans? We know what Rav Chia was saying, that it was specifically to Bevel that God exiled the Jewish people, because he knew, he knew that under the Romans, you know, it'll be much worse. So God is he's doing us a favor and exiling us to, to, to Babylonia and not to uh, not under the Romans. Now, again, is there Rome at the time? Greek is not even on the air, but just comes to tell us that the, that the, the, the quest of Chachamim here is more theological and, theosoph and, and, and uh, philosophical and historiosophical more than understanding like history or trying to to put history together. So God knows that it's better to be under Bavel than be under Rome. And that's why, you know, after the first dis the distract destruction of the first temple, um, he sent us to, to Bavel. And this indicates that living under Babylonian rules um, is preferable to living under Roman rules, okay? Which is the opposite of what Rabbi Barbar Hanu came from the land of Israel, came from Rome, uh, Roman uh, um, um, govern is saying. Now, before before we move to another Gemara that, that will give us, you know, a bigger picture about that that debate, you know, <laughs> which foreign government is is better. Uh, I wanna I wanna light some some um, I put some light on the pasuk because the the verse that uh, that Rabbi Chia is quoting from Iyov, let, let's try to understand it in its place. Because here, God understood its ways and he knew its place. Here it talks about the people, the Jewish people, and he knows you know, what we need and what's better for us, um, the nation. But the Pasuk in Iyov is actually talking about wisdom, about the Torah. And the Pasuk is from chapter 28 in Iyov, and it starts with saying, where, you know, where can wisdom be found? Where is the source of understanding? And then the answer that is given is, God understands the way of it, and he knows its source. In other words, it's only God who knows you know, what to do with the wisdom. And the wisdom can be either the Torah or the wisdom of creating the world. In other words, there's there's wisdom which is kept only to God and no one else can understand it. Rashi, for example, we say that that's the wisdom that with it God created the world, that he looked at the Torah. He looked at the letters and he created words, created the world with that. Some say other things, but it's wisdom it's understanding that is only in the hands of God, and that can also uh, uh, help us understand the, the, um, the discussion in the Gemara. In other words, God understands something about us, about the Jewish nation that the rest of the people don't know. And even that, even that there's no Romans yet, God understands that it's better to start with the exile of, of Bavin. Um, interestingly enough, that quote is also, oh, excuse me, let, let's continue. And after we hear the Baraita of, of Rav Chia, the, the Gemara is saying, okay, so how do, we, how do we put together the two opinions, one by Rav Chia and one by Rabbi Bar Bar Chama, which is better, under Persian uh, ruling or under Romans ruling? And the Gemara says, la kashya. Okay, this is not difficult. 
as this interpretation of Rabbi Chia, of Rabbi Chia refers to the period before the Persians reached Babylonia. And we know in history that the big empires, you know, we had the Sumerian, the Shumer Empire, and then we had the Babylonian Empire, and then, then Persia uh, conquered Bavel, and then Greek conquered the Persian, and then the Romans. So what the Gemara is saying, it's not difficult. The interpretation of Rav Chia saying that it's better to be in Bavel than in Roman um, uh, ruling is before the Persians reached to Babylonia. In other words, where Bavel was ruled by Babylonians, by the Akkadim, and not by the Persians who invaded, who invaded Bavel. And when life there was very uh, comfortable, that statement of Rabba Barbarchana was in was it was issued issued after the Persian reached Babylonia, and when the situation changed and living there became more difficult. Now there's also a problem with that, and we're not going to I'm not going to dwell about it. But we do know that the Persian Empire was re relatively a tolerant one, and let let Koresh let the Jews build rebuild the the, the temple in Jerusalem. And the, and the Persians allowed um, the people wherever every nation and every people kept keep their keep their uh, religion and continue with their with their worshiping. So it's it's a it's a question. You know, we we can ask ourselves what exactly was the Persian ruling and behavior in the time of Tanaim and Amoraim. It's a Sasanic dynasty. Okay, I'm leaving that alone because I want to show how Chachamim really thought about what's behind history. And, and we have another very interesting discussion regarding that issue in Masechet Psachim. And there, first we, the Gemara quotes what we just heard in the name of Rav Chia, that Rav Chia teaches what is the meaning uh, of that which is written, God understands its way and knows its place. The Holy One blessed he knows the Jewish people who are unable uh, to um, withstand the harsh decrees of the Romans. Therefore, he exiled them to Babylonia, whose people are less cruel. But Rabbi Eliezer says the Gemara, I'll show you the Hebrew as well, Amar Rabbi Elazar, lo higla kadosh baruch hu et Yisrael lebavel, ela mipnei she'amuka kesheol. So Rabbi Elazar is saying, no, listen, it's not about the people, it's about the country, like the shape of Bavel, Babylonia, who is, a, who is an ancient land from the time that we hear about Bavel, from the time of Noah. So Rabbi el said, the Holy One blessed he exiled Israel to Babylonia only due to the fact it is a land as deep as the um, uh, nether world, can the Sheol, the underground. It is the land of plains and valleys, which allows uh, to that which is stated, I shall ransom them from the power of the netherworld. In other words, in order to keep, to, to obtain the realization of the Pasuk in Hosea, that God will redeem the people from the, from the underground, from, the, from death, from the, from the netherworld, okay? That's why God exiled the people, the Jewish people to Bavel, not because of the people of Bavel, but because of the land of, ba of Bavel. And then we hear of another opinion, which is also so interesting, and that is Rabbi Hanina. Rabbi Hanina is saying, There are many different opinions, and Chazal are trying to give a deep reason. And, um, um, uh, uh, a, a spiritual reason for why we were exiled to Bavel. And here we heard three opinions by now, one of Rabbi Chia, one of Rabbi Elazar, and the last one is from Rabbi Hanina. And Rabbi Hanina is saying, it is due to the fact that their language, Aramaic, that's what they speak in Bavel, uh, is similar to the language of the Torah to Hebrew, which enables the Jews who live there to study Torah. And, and Rashi is saying, um, because they speak Aramaic, and they will remember the Torah, and they're not going to forget the Torah so quickly. In other words, the reason, according to Rabbi Hanina, 
why God exiled Jewish people to Bavel is because there there was an it, 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 they were able to keep the Torah because the language was similar. So they 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 could learn the new language and they could keep the Hebrew and and understand the language of the Torah and there and not forget Torah uh, totally. Um, by the way, as we know, happened when the people of Israel in Shivat Zion in return from to Zion did not know Hebrew so much. And that's why Ezra had to change the letters and the language. But does, Rabbi, Hanina, Rabbi Hanina doesn't think about that. He just want to, Chachamim are just looking to look underneath history or beyond history and, and give us the message. And they're giving us the message that history is not just, just plain what happened. It's why did it happen this way? And can we find deeper reasons that um, um, inspire us to understand um, that God is there in history as well as in learning the Torah and, and asking us to open our eyes around and look for God everywhere and anywhere. Thank you.